changing Every single move you're making Since I've analyzed predictions Far beyond the comprehension I've been tortured with the writhing Thoughts to stop a star from shining Kill me now before I'm sober So I die before it's over Sense of dramatized inflations that intensifies this tension. I've been tortured with the night. Walks on water, semi blinding. Faith is stronger when I'm sober. I'll survive until. Tonight, Brother Nero, why is Monday Night Raw so shitty? <laughs> My Monday Night Raw is so shitty. How come Jeff Hardy can write a better theme song than the WWE theme songs? Explain that to me. Explain it to me like I'm a retard. Somebody, please. Explain to me why Jeff Hardy can write a better theme than the WWE uh, music people. Please explain it. I'll wait. I'll wait a long time, too. Brother Nero. Brother Nero. Why was Monday Night Raw so shitty? We gotta find that clip of Catman. I don't know where it is, but it's somewhere, and I got it somewhere. It's funny. It's funny. You gotta give it to him. But now, now, my, now, Monday Night Raw isn't so shitty. It's, I mean, it's, yes, it, it still has problems and it's not good enough. But boy, is it 
sure is better than 2022 and 2023. You know, into 2024, it's a little bit better. It could be better still, but whatever. Brother Nero. God damn it, Jeff. Where's Jeff Hardy at? That's a banger, bro. It's been a banger for a long time. Uh, no doubt about it. And uh boy do I miss the the I miss the 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 Hardy Boys when they were delete when they were deleting. I miss the deletions. I miss when they were going to delete the Young Bucks and all that stuff. Man, it was good. I had a blast. Say what you want. 2016 was fire. I can't believe that that was eight years ago now. What the hell has gone wrong in this world? Eight years have passed since Brother Nero and Matt Hardy, broken Matt Hardy, was eight years ago. That's crazy. It was eight years ago that we called a deletion in Fall River, Massachusetts, in front of about 600 people, and Leah, my wife, Sat out in the crowd looking unimpressed. Does anybody remember this? Eight years ago, I sat out there and I called this match from ringside right here. And we watched as my wife watched the Hardys with a unimpressed look on her face. Can we zoom into her and her three girlfriends that were out watching? There's Leah. Leah looks like, yep, I'm watching wrestling with my three girls' friends. Um, you know. What? What? Uh, I'm just watching here. It's just the Hardys, you know, just doing a deletion, just perp. And uh, I remember, um, I remember how long it took for this match to finally happen. Like they were signing autographs all night. You know, it's funny too because a lot of people left. Like the, if you notice the empty seats, you know, there's probably about a hundred seats empty. Like this, this place sits about six hundred people. They sold the place out, so the empty seats are people that are either wandering around or that just decided to leave after they got the autographs. But the ringside is filled, too. There's a, there's 180 people or 200 people around the ring and then on the stage. But then the people were in the crowd as well. So we sold something like 600-something tickets. Um, and shout out to this guy because, let's be honest, what the fuck is that? <laughs> hey, Jeff, it's me, the devil. It's me, Jeff, the devil. Remember me, Jeff, the devil. Look, I'm. you know how you know I'm the devil? Because I got devil horns on me, Jeff. Look, I'm the devil. Oh. I guess we could have just zoomed in to Leah. Let's zoom into my wife. She's right below Jeff Hardy's chin. There's Jeff Hardy's nipple and my wife. Look at that. So, Je you know what, Leah? Leah was always jealous that I got all these photos and videos with the Hardys because we were hanging out at the time. Well, Leah, look at that. You're in a photo with Jeff. See? That's not bad. With the Tony of the Tiger, you know, goatee looking thing. And this guy looking like, uh, looking like Horn Swoggle right here. Looks like Jose Swoggle to me. Then you got uh then you got Ed's view from Japan with the Patriots hat. He made it out. Good job, Ed. Then you got this guy. This kid probably dropped out of school not that long ago. And you got this guy just learning how to use a phone. He's like, look a phone. I'm I'm learning how to use my phone. And you have all these other people we don't even know who they are, you know. But you know. What a banger of a song though. I gotta give it, man. Je Jeff Hardy made better music than than the goddamn WWE uh, music team.
That is pretty crazy. You know? Jeff Hardy just crushed it, though, with that. I don't know why Mastodon's banned, guys. Somebody, j I just found out that Mastodon apparently is banned in the chat. I don't know why the mods do this, man. I don't know why. You got to fucking stop. I'm, pretty soon, I'm going to take everyone's wrench away. Because, like, I don't know, man. I don't know what Mastodon did. But, dude, you can time the mod. Listen, if you're a mod and you're listening, unless somebody's doxing somebody or, or saying that they're just going to kill people over and over again or something like that, I mean, nobody should be banned. You know, at the worst, at the very best, you can give the guy an hour timeout or something like that. But why would you ban Mastodon, who's been in the chat for all these years? I don't know what they're doing. I don't know. Maybe he's the one who said something bad about DeMarco, maybe. Because I thought, if I remember, somebody did something a while ago, and somebody got banned for it. And they... Who I I don't remember who did it, but they told me about it. They were like, "Hey, somebody, I banned this guy because this is why." And I was like, "Oh, fuck, okay." So I don't know. Um, I don't know, man. Oh shit! I just oh fuck! I I I just unapproved users who uh, <laughs> I did I had I had approved users, and then I just unapproved them. So, oh no! I think I just banned Steve Langenheim then again. Fuck. Steve Langenheim, man, if you're out there, uh, please, Steve Langenheim, uh, you know, just uh, reach out to me and send me your channel again, and I'll fix it. But I don't know. Now I'm spending my time looking through trying to unban Mastodon. I, I don't know where he is. Mastodon, if you can email me or DM me on Twitter your channel address. I can get it fixed, but right now it's impossible to find you because there's hundreds of thousand band names. Band names such as Osama Bin Laden's Dick, Tommy Roll Plays with Kids as a Pedophile, um, Joe Cronin Loves Sucking Man Titties Milk, Ryback Raped Leah, that's a name, Ryback raped Leah. Um, I'm a chicken sandwich. That's weird. Um, the social justice Leah. Um, Joe Cronin's a predator. I mean. There's just countless ones of these. You know, Mob Boss 69. Like, what is this? Gavin's a hooker. Like, I mean. um, Yeah. So Mastodon, I really don't think. I'm going to be able to find you amongst these blocked names because there's so many of them. Like, what is this? Oh, well. I tried to uh, find it. Joe Cronin is sexually in old men wearing diapers. I mean, that's a that's a weird one. A lot of Russian names, too, that are banned. Like weird Russian things that we they can't even, you know, we don't know how to read that. I was like, you can't even do it. The names are, like, really long, too. Like, there goes somebody sabotaging Joe for the 45th time. That's a name. JD got a baby pregnant and Tommy NC fucks kids. And if you, by the way, if you don't believe me, if you're sitting there going like, oh, Joe's just making these names up. No. Here, here they are. Here's two of them right here. Ban these are user names. I didn't even, you can make a user name this long. Like what the fuck is wrong with YouTube? JD got a baby pregnant and Tommy NC fucks kids. Sonic Boom presents Reality Shift Enterprises. 
Something tells me those two people are the same person, by the way. Like, what the hell? What are these names? Leah got cream pied by Bullfrog and Gavin, her son. Like, the names are, <laughs> like, what in the hell? It, and again, this is the same person, obviously, as the other things. <laughs> what the hell, bro? Joe Cronin was effed by Tom Brady. Here's another clever one. Jonathan F That's a great one. That's a great name to make on YouTube. By the way, that 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 still exists. All the things that have been taken away and taken down, but that but Jonathan Jonathan it is still there. Ah. <sighs> Hulkamania's cock is running wild on you, brother. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> what is this? Oh my god, dude. <laughs> His cock is coming wild on you, brother. <laughs> oh, my God, bro. Oh, my God. Oh. That's great. Oh, my God, brother. Oh, boy. That's really, I mean, there's so many more. It could just, like, you could go on and on. Pretty sure there's subliminal docs names in there we won't talk about either, but whatever. That one was good. I mean, this is the stuff you find on YouTube, you know? You got to give it credit. Oh. D. Welsh the other night went to Monday Night Raw, and boy, his sign really got he got some good shots. We we saw him monetize this sign, pretty awesome. Thank you, D. Welsh. Beautiful job, beautiful sign, wonderful stuff. Play it again. Let's play play it one more time. God damn, it's fire. It's fire. Oh, my God, brother. Oh, it's so good. Open forum tonight. What do you guys want to say? What do you want to talk about? We are coming up on Monetize This 449. 449 on episode of Monetize This this Saturday night. It's huge. It's huge. It looks like, by the way, it looks like we're sending Jake DeMarco to SmackDown, everybody. That's right. So um, Jake DeMarco is going to be a little tired from SmackDown because it looks like he's going, baby. Shout out to uh, shout out to the WWE for coming through. Is there anybody better than the WWE at this point for doing this? Shout out to you, to the WWE, man. It doesn't get any better than that. How can you possibly fathom that this man and his daughter and his and his wife would be going to SmackDown 
in Mohegan Sun Arena right before WrestleMania when the rock is hot. It's unbelievable. Dreams do come true. Shout out to the WWE. And shout out to uh shout out to the guys. They know who they are in WWE. Shout out to uh the big boys. Big shout out to Triple H especially. I I'm gonna tell you something, man. You know, Jake was trying to bring his daughter to a show. They're all selling out, and the ticket prices were uh, through the roof and crazy. Stuff was nuts, and she's about to have brain surgery. And so he was trying, and he was working on money, and he had the money maybe to do it, and I was going to, we were all going to kind of pitch in, figure out a way to get him there. And we were like, I don't know, though. The tickets are kind of sold. Like, it's like you really got to look for these, and the ticket prices were going nuts. And I went, wow. And I just want to say, man, um, Got to give it to Triple H, bro. Even after all these years, you you might have taken Vic Joseph, but over me, but Triple H is it's pretty cool, man. I thought I wasn't gonna get a response. I thought I would get no response, but there is no better guys than the guys in the WWE, like Adam Pearce and Triple H. And um, some of the other guys over there, the road dog, Jesse James, uh, Bruce Pritchard, all those guys have been great. Got to get up, got to give it to him, man. By the way, the road dog has a great podcast. Oh, you didn't know podcast. You got to listen to that. Are you not subscribed to that shit? Oh, you didn't know. It's great. Uh, it's too bad. Triple H doesn't have a podcast, but Triple H kind of has a million other things going on. Um, but imagine, but you know, Triple H talks a lot, you know, in, in, in things and stuff. And maybe someday when Triple H is retiring or laying back or whatever, if he ever does, he'll probably run, run the show till the wheels fall off. But, um, I'm sure he could have some pretty cool podcasts potentially, but, um, shout out to, uh, big shout out to that, to, uh, to everybody, man, Conrad Thompson, Bruce Pritchard. Big guys. Oh, you didn't know podcast, Road Dog? It's great. And shout out to Triple H for sending our man, the WWE, for sending our guy, Jake DeMarco, to SmackDown on day house. And his daughter, man. Uh, so that should be cool. And then that, that very next day, that night, is monetize this. That very next night is monetize this. That's that's crazy. It's going to be a crazy time. That'll be monetized this 450. 450. What, what if Jake goes to Mohegan Sun and gambles all his money away? Now, Jake wanted me to go. I do want to say Jake wanted me to go. And I feel bad that I'm not going. I do feel bad that I'm not going. But first of all, it would have made it harder to get there with the tickets because for some reason it was easier to find three tickets than four tickets. Four tickets might have put you up in the balcony. Three tickets may make you a little closer. I don't know. But here's the thing. There's no way. I could have gone to SmackDown and then left SmackDown around 11-something o'clock, gotten home at like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., and then gone to work at 5 a.m., and then come home and got ready to do Monetize This 450. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to Mohegan Sun SmackDown. I could have gone. I could have asked. I could have said, hey, you know what? I'd like to go, too, if you got whatever. Or make it four tickets. Make it five. 
I, I just can't do it. I can't do it. So, shout out to the WWE and the people who know who they are for making dreams come true for my friend Jake. Like, seriously. And this is the WWE I'm thanking, you know, those people. And, you know, all the guys there. I mean, we've had Drew McIntyre on the show. We've had Cody Rhodes on the show. Cody Rhodes is a fellow Star Trek fan. Love Cody so much for that. And, um, but yeah, I just, yeah, it's uh, great stuff. So I hope, I hope Jake has a good time. Jake, uh, but then later on that night, it's monetized this. Jake will be have to recover from SmackDown to try to win that belt on Monetize This, episode 450. It's going to be a... Uh, <laughs> I'm just texting Leah. Uh-huh. It's going to be a so it's going to be a crazy week, you know. Would you send me a classic Ro, Rojas? Got to love it. All right. Let's go to the donos and see if there's any donos. If you guys like the shows, I guess uh you can fund the show by uh using the donation link up top. Dono link, it's up there. Topics, questions, comments, guttural insanity. Um, down in the description box down below, it's all linked down there. Expand it open, you know where everything is. Or super chat or do something else. 450 is next week? No, 449 is... No, it's not. 450 is not next week. What the fuck are you talking about, Roas? Um, Smackdown... Uh, in Mohegan Sun is the 29th on Friday, and then the 30th is Monetize This 450. This Friday is Monetize This 449. What kind of drugs are you on, Luke? Take some from me, brother. Oh, my God, brother. Very nice. Very nice. Boys in the chat. Girls in the chat. Hit that like button. Gotta make daddy hard here. Come on. What do we got? 78 likes? We can get 100 likes. If we get 100 likes, it might tell people to watch the show more. Maybe. That's how this algorithm shit works. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday, that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. Sup, Joe. Catfucker and his bald butt fuck buddy are such shills for Tony Khan. I loved Jeff Hardy's obsolete theme. I was also like his modest theme. Yeah, I like those. I like that too. That was good as well. But man, yeah, I love that obsolete theme. I was into that big time. Loved it. Thank you. Monetize this, yeah, is not on not the same night as WrestleMania, yeah. Monetize this four fifty is uh I think a week a week before Mania, if that's true, I think I believe. Not sure. Uh, Joe, I know I sent you the link. Do you think Jade was in character when she said she's never going to wrestle again? Oh yeah, Brian. I, I got the, I got that message you sent me, Brian. I, I think she was just saying like, I may never wrestle again. You know, I don't never have to wrestle again. I think she was just sort of like saying she's such a star and amazing and stuff that she doesn't have to wrestle ever again. She's that good. She don't need to do anything. So she will wrestle again, I believe, but it's just, um, you know, I think that was like her sarcastic heel sort of um, take. Yeah, 449 is this week, and then 
Four fifty is next week. I, I'm not sure what. Did I say something different? Maybe. I mean, I have had a long day at work and other things, and my, maybe I'm having a stroke. I, you know, I don't know. So, uh, thank you, Seabass the Beast. Yeah, the, I'm not surprised he's sucking their ass. I mean, they're kind of lame, you know. Shit bum. Cody Rhodes's face is aging like a dried cake. Oh, that's racist. Adrenaline in my soul. Isn't Cody Rhodes younger than me by a couple of years? Am I crazy? Velvet Floor 18. Thank you. Cody Rhodes age. 38 years old. Yep, he's my age. I'm a little bit older, though. I'm a year older than Cody. He's June 30th. Cody Rhodes' birthday is June 30th, 1985. So I'm a year... I'm almost a year older than him. Me and Cody have almost the same birthday. That's why we're both cancers. He's 1985. I'm 1984. I'm June 28th. He's June 30th. Shit bum. It's close. Brett could put Tracy Chapman in the sharpshooter. Well, you know, I could put Tracy Chapman in a damn sharpshooter. And that's all it would take the hitman to defeat. I don't know. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? Imagine, uh, yo, what's up, Dan Kennedy? What you been up to, Dan Kennedy? Where you been, sucker? Where you been, sucker? Motherfucker. I don't know, bro. Finish my story. My story is going to end with me dead, probably. Finish my story. My story is going to be um, 17 IRS agents kick down my door and then shoot me to death. And then shoot my dog in front of me, too. So they'll shoot my dog and I'll watch my dog dying. which And then I'll start crying and being upset. And right as I do that, I'll, they'll shoot me and I won't even have time to figure out what was going on. That's going to be my life. That is my life. And then they'll arrest my children. That'll be my life. You know, my life is being killed by the government. You know, that's exactly what will happen. Guaranteed. Guaran I guarantee it. You ever been guaranteed? You ever been guaranteed? Because I have. I was guaranteed. That 9-11 wasn't an inside jab, but it was. Hi, Luke Rojas, the Monetize This World Heavyweight Champion. How's it feel to have a belt? That good? Yeah. I figured. Well, here's the other thing, Joe. I'm the Monetize This Champion, and my mother's a whore. Oh, yeah, well... You know, I mean, don't, I wouldn't say that about her, but if you want to, you know, but you should be happy that you have the belt. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, Joe. I mean, here, I, I mean, I'm happy I have the belt, but my mother keeps fucking me. Oh my God. Rojas, what the hell's wrong with you, dude? Why would you say that? Why would you, if that was happening, why would you, why would you admit it? Well, you know, Joe, you, you know, you grow me and you grew me into thinking that I like it from my mother. Okay. <laughs> Again, I don't know. You looked at my nose. It's fucking fat and round. You know? Oh, there you go. How you doing tonight, sweetie? Oh, my God. Damn, Luke. It's only when I talk to him directly, does it? Like, it breaks. What's up, Joe? What's up, man? What's up, D. Welsh? Got the sign out there. It got you know for where you were. It's, that's a tough spot. And it, yeah, it was kind of tough. But you got it on there several times. It was kind of amazing from the angle you were at that that even got Don on. Was, oh shit! Don't mind if I do. Louis Ardenetta. What's my name? It's a whole new game. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. Joe, how long you're giving Mona in? Uh, how long am I giving Monet in AEW? 
I'm gonna say two. I'm gonna say two years. So Mercedes Monet. Well, wait a minute. What was the deal? Didn't they say it was like three years? Does anybody remember? I think it's three years. I would say I would say one or two years, but I think yeah, I, I think it was three or four. Oh God. I think it was five. Wasn't it five million or something? It was three million. So I don't remember now. Maybe I'm thinking. It was five million. It was five million, John. Was this Tommy? I don't know. I thought that was the vo- were you, were you impersonating me or Tom? <laughs> I couldn't tell. No, it was you. But you know what? It's not five million because Okada's getting four, and I think she's getting less than Okada, so it's three. Well, no, you said it was five when you reported it originally back in, like, January. I thought it was five, unless that Well, I didn't wrong. report it. I read the report. Well, that's, well, I mean, I get my news from you, so. Oh, well, yeah, I think we heard, like, oh, she's getting five million, but I don't think so now. Now I think it was said that she's getting three million, but uh, three-year contracts as well, E-Man, I don't know. Uh, I year, mean, either way, it's kind of ridiculous. It's, I mean, does she really deserve it? I, hey man, you get what you deserve, I guess. So, we, you know. oh my God, brother, what are you gonna do? Most, most overhyped possible, like o- overhyped wrestler of all time, like, and this is, and I'm serious about this. Sasha Banks has gone to every, like, has gone to WWE. She's been in WWE for years, and then she went to the Indies. And I feel like everything she did was like, oh yeah, that's kind of cool. I like Sasha though, but uh. I mean, she didn't really do anything. She did that one thing in NXT 27 years ago, and it's like now that justifies her being paid three million dollars a year. And I, I don't know. She's. A, I, I didn't like any. She's. I don't a, like her pro. Well, she's a great talent to have on your roster, and she could be a top female, you know, attraction. But is she? A, is she a massive draw? I don't know. I no, words don't I think so. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think Tony's better yeah. than her. You get hyped about fucking Mercedes and don't get like, oh, don't show like any sort of like doubt about her. Or, like, oh, I don't know about her because uh, otherwise you get cu- fucking called racist or some shit. So, well, hey, man, I love me some Sasha Banks Mercedes. Like, hmm. But I think Tony's bigger than her. Tommy's bigger than what? her. I said, I well, think. Yeah. Tony I mean, is yeah, than he's bigger than her, all right. He's bigger than everybody. No, I said Tony. Oh, Tony Khan, you mean? Tom? No, Tony Storm. Tommy. Oh. Tommy's body fat percentage is bigger than the percentage in the ratings that will go up because of Sasha. Yeah, Tony Storm has now gotten herself to a point where, you know, Sasha's going to have to try to keep up with that because the girl who's already there has established a character. Right. So, I mean, right. But it's good because the both of them, I mean, are two legit talents, it feels like. So, yeah. I mean, like, she, you've got two people. Came, now. Yeah. When she came out that, when Sasha came out that night at Big Business, I thought she should have been like, Tony, get your ass out here. Why? Because I think it would have been a good feud between her and Tony. And, but she didn't no, say she, anything she, meaningful. Well, you'd be rushing she it, you know. Been, she should have made Tony Khan come out there and then Tony Khan would have to like write her like a thirty thousand dollar check or something and uh <laughs> you know give all of his life savings away to her because she might get them like twenty thousand people next week. <laughs> <laughs> or something or something pathetic. I mean that would be cool though if Tony Khan literally that was his character and said he had to simp out for all the wrestlers just so they Well we don't know what Luke was saying, but I'll tell you what, if he has this microphone on uh, monetize this 450, he might be in he's trouble. Done. Yeah, he's done. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Jake will win the belt and then, um, drive to New Jersey and then club Luke in the head with the belt. Did that happen? Remember, remember Jake never lost it. Yeah, you know, everyone's really brought that point up that, you know, Jake never lost the belt, you know. It's uh that's that's something that um 
Should Shit be, bomb. Should be recognized. Isn't a solo sicko what Ron Jeremy did to himself? <laughs> Irvin Stalker's wrestling and stuff isn't a solo sicko what Ron Jeremy did to himself. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do a solo sicko. Let, oh, uh, let me do a solo sicko. Ah. Uh, Oh, yeah. Duncan Chino? Yeah. If I go, what's my name? Duncan Chino. It's a whole new game. Duncan Chino. Sakoa. Oh, creamy goodness. I'm your friend. Say hello to my, my chocolate blend. Bring back to Oink the Clown and the Mountie to WWE. Where Just the Mountie the Canadian. We always get our man. I'm the Mountie. Hey, Stacks Monet, thank you for the $11 super chat party. Appreciate that, brother. Hey, uh, hey Stacks Monet, can we get a brother for the brother? Oh, my God, brother. So, Joe. What's up, D-Wells? About last night at Raw. Yeah. When uh, when Jay caught out Jimmy and Solo, where Jimmy and Solo came out, was from a tunnel and they came walking right past my chair behind me. <laughs> Did you touch them? No, but they were about probably about 50 feet behind me. They came walking out behind me though. Did you bend over? No. Look at you with no. your, with your little laugh. Like, no, <laughs> you wanted to though. Come on to you all. Hey. hey, don't make fun of D. Well, she said he might have my back or he might stab me in the back. I don't know. At this point, I don't know, because he just shot on me when my fucking mic went out. <laughs> I had my fucking back. All right. <laughs> well, you deserve it. What happened to your mic? Did you buy it at Walmart? Yeah, your mic sucks. It's the fucking reception in my house it sucks. I can never find a good po- like fucking spot. I had to change bedrooms. You know, I was sleeping in the living room, and now it's like somebody else sleep. We kind of rotate it because it's only a fucking two-bedroom apartment. And uh, oh. so... Now, I mean, yeah. so what? What's with the Wi-Fi? You got like really bad Wi-Fi or something? I'm I, I'm either in my shitty fucking like this room that I'm in right now. I don't like it because it's fucking echoey and it has horrible reception. Or I'm in my basement and that fucking sucks because the one corner that I can actually like sit down and shit is like just the worst fucking reception in the whole house. Like it constantly. Drops out of 5G to 4G to like 2G sometimes. So, oh, so you're losing. Hmm. I said, so you're a loser then. Wow. Wow. This is what you. You know what? I mean, I don't even know anymore with D Welsh. I mean, I tried to be his friend, and then and he's like, "Yeah, go your back," and then he's like turning his fucking back on you, despite the fact that I'm the only one that put over your fucking faggot sign that you couldn't even oh. put right. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be at the fucking show. Yeah, you forgot to mention that you'd be fucking seventy seats back behind everybody where nobody could fucking see. You'd spell fucking four fifty Y fifty because you're a retard. Oh. You put everybody's name in the tiniest fucking font when like you know the whole fucking idea is to promote the show. You think you'd make that the fucking forefront and bigger, but instead you're fucking advertising a little tiny fucking baby font for your little tiny baby hands and your fucking dumb baby fucking head. Uh, and now. You're going to fucking talk shit to me to monetize this champion, the guy, the guy who put you on, the guy who made you a fucking name on this show that's synonymous with everybody. Nobody gives a shit about it. If you had just donated hundreds of dollars, nobody would have fucking given a damn. But you know what? I'm the one who called you out every week. I'm the one that fucking made this stupid rivalry of ours mean something to the fucking JCS fans. And that's why people actually know you. If not, you would have just been another anonymous fuck who donates to the show and then killed himself, and everybody would have been happy. All right, your family probably would have been happy too, you right fucking here. pathetic piece of shit. I'm a- your dumb fucking goatee. <laughs> I'm gonna leave this briefcase right here. Oh my god. I'm gonna leave this briefcase. I'm not sure right Welsh here. is gonna help you now. I'm Hungry boner. Case right here. <laughs> oh my Son, god. Run, run, you fat bitch. Oh, run, run, was... run, you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch. Run, 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 you fat bitch. Run, you fucking fat bitch. Don't you think I'm a fucking terrorist? (laughs) Run, you fat bitch. Run, you fat bitch. Your tracks today. Hungry Boner.
We need a bra and panties match at Mania. Oh my god, brother D. Welsh sounds like a retarded 12 year old. <laughs> oh. Hey, fuck off, oh my god, runner. brother. <laughs> I'm the one who advertised my entire this on Raw. That's right. And people saw you it. You didn't either. You didn't either. They never panned your sign once. And the one time they did, it was out of focus, you fucking retard. I never thought I'd hear someone say, fuck off, hungry boner. <laughs> You see anybody there that said, monetize this? Like, anybody? No. Oh, and, and speaking of Road Dog, Joe, I saw Road Dog last night. What? Yeah, Road Dog was at Raw last night. Oh, really? What did he do? He was up in ringside. Oh, God. They've, they've, he's, now he's really become a roadie? Yeah. <laughs> What was he doing at ringside? What, what was he doing? He was he was changing out the ring during every break. No, he wasn't. Get the fuck yes, out of he here. he was. He was. Get the fuck I'm out not, of here. I'm not joking you, dude. He was in a suit, but he was ringside. What? Yeah, I saw him helping changing out ring. All right. Why? Wait a minute. Why? I'm sorry. I got to text Road Dog right now. Like, <laughs> bro, you've been demoted to fucking ring crew. <laughs> right. I'm not fucking with you either. I saw him about four or five times at least. All right. Wait, I've got. This. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm literally like. I'm like. I'm sorry, bro. I'm legit. I'm sorry. I had to text him right now. Like, whoa, bro. You are fucking setting up the ring. What the fuck are you doing? Things have definitely changed since the Vince left. <laughs> My God. I don't know. I'm sorry, Road Dog, if you're like sleeping now. I shouldn't have texted him, actually, but it's 11 at night. But <laughs> wait a minute. Oh, my God, bro. He was. I know. Oh, that... nice. Okay. I believe. Nice around with you. All right. I know. I know that he's kind of a utility guy at this point in the company. Like when, if they need a hand backstage, he's back there. If they need someone to run raw for some emergency, whatever he can do it. And, I, but I've also heard, I also know that he does, you know, help run a lot of the house shows and, and work with a lot of people. So, but like, man, I did not expect you to say he was fucking rolling the mats out. Like they're in the, I saw him at least four times. <laughs> I'm assuming he's pretty. His his look is pretty distinct. Bald head. Bald head. Yeah. That's the distinct look. <laughs> I mean, he has and a distinct look, but beard. yeah. I mean, <laughs> the one of the things I can think of is that he could have been. He could have been there because. Um, like either somebody else wasn't there or there are time cues happening and he's there running the whole deal and he can't help it, but want to help as well. That could be what's up, but wow. I don't know. That's weird. I, that's he's, I mean, listen, he can do anything, but it's like, he can do a lot more than that. I saw him setting up the a segment for this contract signing. What? Anyway, um, uh, Welsh, what was uh, what was your favorite moment of the night? What what what, did, what made you happy and most? Um, I would probably say seeing Jimmy and Solo come out right behind me was kind of that was pretty neat. Um, Cody's pop was pretty was pretty good, and seeing Becky jump off that ladder that was pretty nice spot. Yeah. Yeah, you probably want to see her take her clothes off too, right? <laughs> nah. 
Oh, you can't uh, say that. Was the white. All right. Well, thank you, Welsh. Uh, you've been a big help. Um, anyway, uh, apparently Danny Masterson, by somebody in the chat, said Danny Masterson is being targeted in prison by the gay gangsters. Um, I hope that's true. I would, I would just, uh, I don't know. I want to fantasize about that later uh, alone. Covers. Um, yeah. Fuck. What is going on next week for SmackDown anyway? I mean, we know that Cody and Roman are having their stare down, but you think The Rock's going to show up? Or you think that's going to be the one week? The one week that fucking Jake gets tickets is like the week that is just the filler show. Like, no Cody, no Seth, no no fucking Roman, no Rock. Um, yeah. I, okay. I, I think that, um, well, yeah, that, that'll probably be the one segment where he's not there. Because I think The Rock is only scheduled for next week, this for this Friday, so that he may not see The Rock in Mohegan Sun. Well, no, no, Rock's not even showing up until I think um, two Weekend. weeks from now on on Raw, April first. Oh. oh wow, okay, so yeah, so yeah, it's too bad. So what I'm saying is, what's next week? Is is Roman going to be there next week, or Cody or Seth? Because I mean, it would be it would suck to go to. I mean, maybe they'd show yeah, up no, for they just yeah. No, they they literally said it on Raw. Cody is facing, Cody is facing on, uh, like facing up with Roman this Friday. Yeah, but I'm talking about the show that Jake's going oh, to. Yeah, I guess we don't really know. I'm actually kind of worried that it could end up being like a bit of a throwaway show. Like, okay, whatever on this one, because it's it's in a very. I mean, Mohegan Sun is a small arena. That's a very small arena. It's at the. Yeah. It's literally at the. That's, it's at, it's, at, the, it's at the casino. You can walk. You walk out of the door, and the first thing is, "Oh, look! Let's go play games. Let's it's casino." It's the coolest thing ever. If you've never been to Mohegan Sun Arena, which you probably haven't, but uh, it is so cool, man. And I met a lot of people there when we went there the last time. It was fucking awesome. I remember. Um, I was coming down. I went down the elevator with. Uh, what's his face? We never heard from him again. Um, Austin Aries, Austin Aries down the ladder, down the, down the elevator with me. And I tried to make small, I, I didn't try to make small talk, but I said something. I was like, I was like, oh, it's, uh, I was like, oh, run Cause he was like running and he ran to the elevator. Then he was like, I was like, oh, running late. It's time for that meeting or whatever. And he goes, huh, yep. And then I said, yeah, I got to pick up some, uh, some tickets. And then he was like, cool. And then I was like, yep. <laughs> and that's all that happened, bro. Because <laughs> I wasn't going to. I've heard he's a notorious douche, though. So, I he, mean. Yeah, he was kind of like, I could just tell he wasn't, he wasn't in the mood to, like, have to deal with a fan or somebody. I probably could have said, like, yo, let's get a photo. Can I get a photo or whatever? But I was like, no. I was just like, yeah, man. I, I I just said shit like, like, all right, well, I'll be there to see the show. Have have a good time. I mean, you know, hope you kick some ass. I'll be watching. That was kind of all I did. You know, I was just like, yep. And I was going to get my tickets no, too. Perfect. Perfect. No, because you know what? It sounded like he was douchey to you, even when you were not being like about like taking a photo. But imagine if you were like, you just didn't read the room at all, and you're like, hey, man, can you sign this for me? Can you sign? Yeah, he was running too. Like he was running. He ran out of the elevator. He ran to the elevator. Your mic died again, I think. Um, but it was. I up? mean, I, so yeah. I mean, it's it's best that it ended with him just kind of blowing you off. I I pro I probably wouldn't have even tried to talk to him. I would have been like, just fucking look down. Don't even. Don't even. I get weird with like that type of social interaction. Yeah, yeah, I just, I, you know, I couldn't help it. I was, I was like looking at him, like, oh shit, Austin Aries, and I, and I think I might have even said something like out loud like that, like, oh, uh, like, oh, and, then, and he was like, hey, hey, man, that sort of thing. He wasn't whatever, but I, I was like, man. oh yeah, I'm getting my ticket. He asked me actually. That's what it was. He did say something to me. He said, um, he said, I think the, I think, cause I said something about tickets. I'm like, yeah, just get my tickets or whatever. And he was like, oh yeah, I think it's straight 
straight down to the end to the left or something or to the right. I don't remember. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's straight down and then it's to the left. It's to the booth. And he goes, yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. He's like, but um, he's like, I, he's like, I'm gonna head in. I gotta head in. And I was like, okay. And that's all that happened. It was just like very quick. And he ran and he fucking ran. He was like flying. Um, and all the wrestlers were, by the way. So I'm standing there at Will Call getting my tickets. And I, I remember because I was texting you guys and tweeting and doing things like that. And I remember like I was hoping to actually run into Road Dog because, you know what I mean, um, he had hooked it up at that, I, I think, at that show a while ago, a long time ago. Shit, it was a while ago now. But it was, uh, you know, the purple. They were put, this was when they were putting the purple stuff up for the, uh, what the fuck is it called? What was it called? 205 Live. Yeah, 205 Live. So, um. You know, I was like, oh, maybe, you know, say thank you type of thing. Uh, but I got my tickets from Will Call. But, man, I'll tell you, if you ever want to see the wrestlers, just go to – just always show up at Will Call. Like, b- like around – between, you know, you know, if you ever – if you're early, you ever get to a wrestling show early, uh, between 2 p.m. – around 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. or maybe 1 to 3.30, you know, you'll just see all the wrestlers flooding in and no nobody's around. And they're rushing because they're getting to the meeting and – they're going to have the big meeting and well, here's what we're doing today and all that bullshit, get ready. And that's it. You know, that's usually what happens. So, you know, you'll always catch them. You just always will. I went to five shows. I ran into everybody. Baron Corbin was gambling with me at a table. Like fucking, I ran into tons of you guys who were like, Oh, Joe Gronin. Like, and I was hung out with those people. Somebody fucking invited me to their table. Like, and it was in Mohegan Sun Arena is so weird that you can walk around and gamble and do all these things and then just walk in and walk, and all of a sudden you're in a fucking arena. It's like it's the weirdest thing. But love it. I wish I was going. I'm not, but I wish I could go. But um I'm glad Jake is going with with, with everybody and, and they'll have a good time. But uh that being said, yeah, you know, your mic sucks, sucks and what? No, I my I'm I was getting my uh my charger, my mic, my phone was about to die, so I'm sorry. Oh, I'll I'll charge you up. How about that? Yeah. How's that monetize this char- belt? Does it have enough loads on it by now? Yeah, you know what, dude? I honestly, I got like really fucking panicked because I saw a scratch on it, and it, it's not like a big noticeable one, but I got like I was like, Fuck shit. man, I was so pissed off because. I didn't know if it, it was from me or if it was from the fucking, you know, when it was being delivered here. But, uh, yeah, it made me really cautious about handling it at all. So I kind of I kind of haven't it. touched it in a while. I've just propped they, it up. They all seem to come with a couple of scuffs somewhere, you know. And quite honestly, the belt made yeah. to the belt makers. Yeah, well, I mean, it was made in, it was made in Pakistan, so. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the company that he that – he, buys them from right i don't think it's pakistan i thought it was i don't think it's pakistan but i will that's, say that well that's where my that's my, my where my other belt was made well your other belt's a piece of shit they're running a an illegal pakistani championship belt fucking organization or whatever the fuck crime rink i think that the um i think that every belt comes with some scratches and things and what I don't understand is when when you're buying a belt, you know, for maybe two, three, four, five hundred bucks, and you order a custom belt like this, why don't they all come with protective sleeves? They they literally don't. They just come with. I don't think they do. I think they just come the belt wrapped up. Yeah, yeah. WWE does that with the sleeves. They put they put it in like a nice. Uh, what is it like a? Not a leather sleeve, but it's really like nice and cushiony. Um, and they and they, I think that probably prevents a lot of scratches and stuff. So yeah, when you're just delivering it, kind of haphazardly, you know, taped up. It, yeah, that is weird. You'd think you'd think they'd have something for that, but um, I don't know if that's where the scratches are from, or maybe I fucking just, you know, I fucking scraped my penis against it too many times jacking off, but. I don't know, but I'm getting worried. So I've just kind of propped it up under a uh, a nice light, and it looks all majestic and beautiful. And um, I only I'll pick it up when I have to do promos. That's why I, I don't like people like, oh, you're not gonna go anywhere with it. 
Why? So I could get some fucking filthy guy's hands all over it or some shit? I'm the champion. I want to talk to some fucking peasant and him fucking rub his disgusting DNA on my title. It's all right. It's for me. Yeah, I mean, that's what... Remember when ugh, when so many people just did so many things to that old belt? Oh, my God, brother. The old one. Bob had had it on his big, fat stomach while he was sweating. Rest in peace. <laughs> oh, my God. This is so terrible. What? I just can't... Stand. I just I love the fact that we always just go, Bob had that piece of shit. <laughs> Fucking disgusting slob. Rest in peace, R.I.P. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> poor guy. I remember when he said that the show ruined his life. Well, turns out McDonald's did. Um, but so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, uh, brother! Oh my god, uh, brother! <laughs> oh my god, brother! I'm sorry. I rest in peace for real, Bobbit man. I loved. I loved him. We uh, we talked. You know what's funny? You know what? This isn't funny. Actually, really, it's not funny. But you know, Bobbit, Bobbit, you know, he literally left the show, as many do. You know, he left the show really just to, I don't know, man, to like, I think just a virtue signal or something. And then he tweeted out that the show ruined his life. Being monetized, this champion, like, was depressing and like it made it hurt his soul or something like that. And what? and so you know, I got mad at him because I was like, come on, bro. And then he got even madder, and I was like. Okay, bro. The show is ruining your life. All right. Uh, like, you're the yeah, monetize this champion. Um, but anyway, so then after all these years, we made up and we talked and we did this big talk and DMs and we were at stuff like that. And he was so nice. We were having a good time and it was like old times. And I was like, listen, man, it's all right, bro. It's just a show anyway. It really isn't a big deal, you know? Um, so anyway, I'll talk to you later. And then it was like, you know, we DM'd here or there. He was sharing uh, tweets. We were commenting on certain things on Twitter once in a while. And then he died. And uh, it was like, fuck, man. Like, that is very sad. But it was like, I'm glad I got to talk to him before he died. But it was like, you know, you make jokes like you're going to die. Like, dude, lose weight, you know. Um, and you don't, but you you don't think they're still going to happen for some reason. It's weird. And then it does. Um, and, you know, the same thing happened to Real Talk. And, you know, Real Talk was, you know, we got in, a, we got in weird little, like, arguments about things here or there. But, like, um, one of the biggest things that we argued about a long time ago is, like, he was talking to somebody who, you know, everybody had a problem with. And, you know, he, then, he had, then he had a problem with him. And then it was okay. And we got in this little thing. But then we, we made up. We started talking in DMs. And we were having fun talking again. And once in a while, he'd send me stuff and I'd, I'd look at it. And uh, six months after that, he died. And um, I don't know, it's some weird shit. It's really weird. And then... um, but is Don't turn your back on Joe, because otherwise when you reconcile with him, your time is numbered. <laughs> You're going to die. Like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. But yeah, the, apparently the curse of Cronin. The curse of Cronin, uh, <laughs> yeah. And there's another one too. There's like there's like four. It's not that's those are just two. There's two others. Same thing. You know what would have been it would have been great setup. Like, well and then um, you know, a few months later, you know, you know, we were talking again and you know, we were going back and forth and then um well a few months after that I found out uh he was gay. <laughs> no, like, like, just that's the reason why I had to stop being friends with him. <laughs> <laughs> I found so, out that he uh, was raped. That like you're kind of dead to me. He he's a trans. Yeah, I I, I this happened also with uh, Bailey Smoke Rudolph. Same thing. That's three. There's mu- it, dude. It's crazy. It, there's multiple people. It's all the same story. Was the Bailey Smoke Rudolph a, a name based on Bailey? Or was that before Bailey became a character on the show? Well, I mean, I guess no, not I th- character on the I, I think I, I don't a hundred percent remember, but if I think it's a something to do with the deer and JB because he smoked Rudolph, I guess. Oh, okay, I got you. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I'm stupid. I know. I now that you literally said that, <laughs> putting it together, I'm like, how did I not get that? I'm pretty sure that's what it meant, but I mean, I could be wrong, but I always thought that's what it was, and I never fully knew. 
But um, there's been several. It's just those are the three. I I don't think there's maybe there's no one else after that. But maybe there's somebody I'm forgetting. But yeah, that it's just weird that those all three people had the same thing. We were talking, everything was whatever, fine. And all of a sudden, somebody got mad at me, and then I was like, "What the fuck are you mad at me for? Fuck you!" And then we made up, and then they died. Um, maybe someone should check on uh, Compton. <laughs> like and uh what's his name the other guy tex or whatever that guy used to be on check on those guys they could be dead um but you know how life happens hey bullfrog is a moron <laughs> me, <laughs> road dog looks like santa claus on drugs road dog looks like santa claus on drugs Oh my god, bro. Uh yeah, I guess so if he took a lot of drugs, I I suppose. I think Road Dog's got a happy look. I don't think he's got a druggy look. I think he's got a you know. I guess I can see kind of what you're saying, but I think Road Dog's got a pretty big smile, you know. Like Road Dog's I'd like him to be Santa. I'd be like, "Yeah, Santa." And he's like, "Hey, man, let me tell you something." I love Road Dog. He look uh no, I think he's Never I never bought bought Road Dog as a wrestler. I bought him as just like that fun uncle. That's like, oh man, I want to give this guy a hug. You know, not saying that like he wasn't a good wrestler. I just never was intimidated by him. Yeah, he has that very like, not I don't know, fatherly type personality. You know, like he seems like, hey, what's going on, pal? Like he's definitely more outgoing and nicer than like, uh, you know, a Super typical wrestler that you seem like. Yeah. For first time ever, AEW is coming to Quebec City, Whoa. March 27th. I'd love to go, but dollar is low. Also found out today that in April, Brutus the Barber Beefcake is doing me 10 greet near me. 85% sure I'm going. 85% sure I'm going. <laughs> Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer Muppet Baby, thank you for the $11. Uh, yeah, that's got to be something you can go to. Quebec City, hey, it ain't Montreal. It's more south, so... Yeah, you got to go to that, right? That's cool. Bruce the Bar of Beef Cave is doing a meet and greet. Well, that's uh, that's interesting because I think, you know, Brutus, I think he lives, I think Brutus lives out here in Massachusetts, I believe, somewhere out here, maybe on the Cape. I, I don't know. So that's interesting. Yeah, Brutus is all right. I haven't seen him in forever. Based on JB hunting, yeah, Ness, that's what I thought too. But um yeah, yeah it was a sad, it was sad to hear like that's crazy bro I can't believe we lost these it's I almost still it's one of those things where I almost don't believe these people are gone you know it's like mm -hmm. they all found the yeah, show yeah. from wrestling I, I, I always feel like we're gonna just randomly get a call one day and be like yo John Slayer just yeah by the way that whole thing was bullshit they locked me up in an asylum <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah, like he's been kidnapped or something for this whole time, and then he's just like, "Yeah, I dealt with the dough. I killed no motherfuckers. I'm back." I mean, dude, that would make my day, or like, yeah, it would make my whole fucking year if I just just randomly one day you'd hear fucking Larry Funk on the phone again. But you know, never gonna happen, right? Fuck, dude, like you, like you don't think about these people as if they're like, not not like people, but you don't think like, oh yeah, they're just always a part of the show. And then just one day, like, oh, yeah, Larry Funk fucking died, or Hobbit died. Yeah. It's just really weird, you know? Yeah, especially since I'm they were sure. all, like, like, Bobbit was younger than me. I think Real Talk might have been maybe younger than me. Uh, You're catching up to... I think Bailey was smoked Rudolph was... I think Bailey smoked Rudolph was younger than me. These people were all younger than me. Larry Funk wasn't. Larry Funk was definitely like 58 or something, but. Are we going to find out that Larry Funk was like a part of the KKK or something? And no. we got to like retroactive I don't, talk about him? No, I don't <laughs> think so. Because like the way he talked, he loved everybody. He's like, no, nah, man, fucking I love everybody. Fuck, I drink with everybody. He was too happy. But what I could see is like he like disappeared to go do things and like never really called again. But then his nephew or somebody who pretended to be his nephew was like, he's dead. <laughs> we all believed it, but no, he really is dead. But, uh, it's just, yeah. uh, I saw believed it for five years and the real Larry Funk 
called up a bunch of times, and Joe's just like, no, nah, this is an imposter. No, Joe, it's your old friend. No, I'm not buying it, buddy. <laughs> that could have happened. Oh, who's on the fucking phone now? Is it D. Warsh? It's Razor Ramon. It's me. Yeah. <laughs> hey. How you doing, brother? Bad forever. Uh, just drinking a Pepsi and uh, chilling for right now. Maybe you shouldn't drink that high fructose corn syrup. You're going to be next. <laughs> uh, that's uh, the one with the real sugar. Oh, well, you'll be okay then. Um, Except it feeds the cancer, but you know. <laughs> if cancer gets me, at least something will. Yeah, it's all right. It's way better than the high fructose corn syrup, though. That shit just murders your liver. Oh, I bet. <laughs> Dude, if I, I'm I'm to the point now where if I don't if I see high fructose corn syrup on anything, I go nope, and I don't do it. Except um, there are there's a couple exceptions on that. And uh, it's on, so I no longer will, like, daily I won't do it. So I won't drink Pepsi anymore because I'm I'm not drinking high fructose corn syrup every day. Also, soda makes you fatter, but I'm like, you know what, I'm going to cut out Pepsi, so no more Pepsi. Um, any of the fruit drinks that have high fructose corn syrup, I, I go, nope, I'm not drinking those because I drink a lot of fruit juice. So, you know, but. If I if I'm having pancakes, I want the Aunt Jemima or whatever the fuck it's called now, Pearl Butt Fucking Pussy. Um, I I will have the syrup with the pancakes, even though I know it's got high fructose corn syrup in it. Wait, did they rename Aunt Jemima? Yeah, oh, that's bullshit. Where the fuck have you been, Luke? That three years ago they did this. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, I, I feel like. I swear, I ha- I've i seen a fucking Aunt Jemima bottle, like, in my house. Well, it can't be. if you do, it's because it's four years, three or four years old. Jesus fucking. That's, that's, like the, what, the big that's lot what, or something where they still sell the old shit. Are you going to assume that all black women are ants, you fucking racist? You just, what the fuck are you? Uh? It's now called Pearl Milling Company. What uh, and, and who's the lady on the fucking bottle? There's no lady. There's no lady on the. Co- it's a, it's a milling company. Picture of the original company's logo or whatever. Yeah, you know they should yeah. put a fucking. <laughs> what the? Dude, fuck not to be outdone, some stu- southern states are are releasing their own syrup. Pick cotton. <laughs> <laughs> just put a fucking syrup bottle with the 9-11 fucking event going on just fucking two twin towers crumbling down right yeah. next to your fucking pancakes and butter i mean this makes dude i think i have seen these fucking bottles of fucking syrup in this in this fucking you know these pancake mixes i just probably thought that they were like generic whole foods versions of the fucking of the actual product you know what i'm saying like the knockoff version but that's that's where aunt jemima went that's that's Aunt Jemima. Yeah. How do you fucking have a perfect fucking marketing tool? Like literally, everybody knows your bottle for being the la- the one with the fucking black lady on it, and then you just turn it into this shit. This abs- This has pissed me off, bro. Man. I've talked really to angry. so many people about this. They, over syrup. <laughs> they, they're literally they're literally erasing black people. They've erased all black people from every, almost most things. And then they've erased any minorities from things. It's like, bro, I, you know, this is part of, it's just like, to me, it made me like, it was more diversity. Like, oh, look, everybody makes food and pancakes and can do it really well and things like that. Like, I, I'm sorry, I didn't see it this way. And most other people don't either. And the original people are mad about it. And most of the people I talk to are mad about it. But you know what? They kept, the, they look so similar that you kind of like you is what it is is I, I accept it. I, I see it. I'm like, oh yeah, it looks the same kind of, but not really. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's very, it's, de- it's definitely weird, but Hey, okay. Well, yeah. I just, it just I still me, buy it. It pisses, me, it pisses me off because I don't, I don't know. It's just like you said, it's just randomly. Why are we getting rid of her face? I'm like, why couldn't you keep her face on the fucking box? Cause, um, I, I just don't get it. I don't know. It. 
I understand part of what they were saying about how she was utilized back in the day, but it's like, so what? Like, it's not like it, this person got rich off this shit. She should like you're a mascot. I and mean, it's like yeah, what? You, so what? Black people can't be mascots. Only white people can. Other people can. Other things can. But this like it's like. I don't know, bro. That like the Redskins, those people want that. That's like an honorary thing. It's not just like it's not like you're some sideshow. You're legit a a face of the company, like in a good light. I I, I don't understand. But whatever. They, hey, fuck it. You want to do that? I don't know. I'm wanting honestly. I'm gonna tell you right now. I people are saying it looks the same. The bottle looks the same. Um. No, it doesn't to me. Like I, I don't think it looks the same. I think the Pearl Milling Company one looks like something that you would get at like Aldi. It would be the Aldi version of the real fucking syrup. And, and you like, know, I just, I just what's the what's the what's the what's their rival for the syrup? Like I, I don't know any other companies besides Aunt Jemima that come to well, my Ms. mind. Miss Butterworth. There was that one. Oh, Mrs. Buttersworth, replace, yeah. She's good. Remember, uh, remember, yeah, remember the Dave Chappelle skit from SNL? Back, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Bro, that is fucking hilarious. That's the one, right, where they're like, we need to change our people on the covers of our cereals or whatever. Um, Oh, my God. Yeah. When he's Count Chocula. I know we've played it before, but it's got to be one of the fucking greatest things I've ever seen. Yeah, you said he was made of chocolate. Yeah. That was funny. I got so many nieces and nephews. <laughs> jobs, baby. Mm -hmm. Oh, here it is. Sorry, but it's just not working out. We have to let you go. But I'm Aunt Jemima. <laughs> <laughs> that lady's... I don't think she's quite looks like Aunt Jemima, but... <laughs> <laughs> Pancakes. Everyone loves your pancakes, Aunt Jemima. It's you. You're the problem. Me? What did I do? It's not what you did. It's how you make us feel about what we did. But you can't fire me. I'm a slave. That's the only good thing about your job, the job security. We understand. No, you don't understand. All I ever did was make pancakes. <laughs> And that's why I'm pretty sure she got rich off of being on this box. Now, if someone knows any better, let me know. But and it's just we have to clean house. Come on now, we know why people don't clean their own house. <laughs> yeah, you're talking to slaves. This is ridiculous. If we can't work, how come the all-state guy gets to work? <laughs> <laughs> Now, where in cotton picking minute, Uncle Ben? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew you'd sell me out. It ain't personal, son. But if we getting fired, you should be getting fired, too. Yeah, yeah fire Allstate guy, too. Stop calling me Allstate guy. <laughs> I have a name. It's Guy from Waiting to Exhale. You're all fired. No, but I'm actually chocolate. I'm not black at all. Ridiculous. Another likely story. Look at those big chocolate lips behind them fangs. Big old fat lips. Seriously. America. Look at Pete Davidson's lips. <laughs> Maybe I got some Italian in there somewhere. Some Italian, then we'll put you on some spaghetti, you chocolate bitch. <laughs> all right, that's enough. You're all fired except for Allstate guy. Thank you very much. All right, fine. We'll leave, but remember, you made a big mistake. Mm -hmm. All right. Phil ascend in the land of lakes, lady. Please. Bro, did they cut out the part where he said chocolatey N word? I think so, I'm yeah. A real chocolate. How come he's still working, huh? <laughs> But I'm not even black. I'm made of chocolate. He calls him a chocolatey N-word. Yep. He did. Go back. I didn't hear. Oh, my God. We got to find... Like, where is it? Did they blink it, blank it out? 
skipped ahead. So no, but I don't. I swear to God, they blank. They skipped it or something. You what? might have skipped it. I think. Go back. I don't know. Let me see. You chocolatey nigga. Oh, there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it says. Let me tell you something. These streets is gonna eat you alive, you chocolatey nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so uncomfortable the white fan, like the white people in the audience got like notice how they like kind of did a oh should we laugh <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm like, I'm these streets are gonna eat you alive <laughs> look at the it's the it's the the outfit dude like who the fuck put this guy in this fucking outfit dude <laughs> This might be one of the funniest things SNL did, like, in the last 10 years. Like, it's because Dave Chappelle's... It's because it's just the Chappelle show. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at fucking Count Chocula. Bro, <laughs> who the fuck made that? Oh, God. Dave Chappelle is the best, bro. Like, ugh. George Carlin, Dave Chappelle for me. Uh, the two of them in in a uh, fucking order. We lost. Um, go I, ahead. I say I say Norm Macdonald is up there. Oh, yeah. No, I think he he might be better podcast form than stand up. You know, stand up. He just here's the stand up. He doesn't even try to do a stand up routine. He just tries to fuck with people. Here's the <laughs> here's the thing, Luke. You know, you know, as a as a here's the thing. Uh, you know, the worst day I ever had was Luke. The day you died. That's right. The day I died. <laughs> no, oh God, I, you know him too well. No, it was the day. No, it was the day by that. You know when you're taking a dump and the poo gets stuck in your butt, kind of, and you don't know how to get it out. <laughs> and I had a meeting right after. That. <laughs> I was I'm like, what do I do? You know, and there's not enough toilet paper in there. Uh, but no, I, it, I love that he would make. He would force his guests to read like horribly racist jokes, <laughs> like old timey racist jokes, like, "Well, yeah, the bl <laughs> some something darky or something like that," and and they would just like Super Dave Osborne was on there the whole one time. And he's like, "I don't even know how you could, how could you laugh at something like that?" <laughs> oh my God, Super Dave, he's dead too. Yeah, Cronin mm -hmm. curse, Norm curse. The Norm Curse. Well, we're going to go to the curse of, uh, I guess, the curse of Sleepy in a second. So, Yeah. Well, you know, you said that was one of the best, um, what's it called? One of the best skits that SNL has done in a while. Let me tell you something. SNL I, might have always been trash and may have only had a, good, a few good years in total. And even then, there was a lot of it. That was really hit or miss. I was watching like late or maybe not late 80s, but maybe early 80s when, when Eddie when Eddie Murphy was still on the show. Yeah. I was watching skits with Joe Piscopo because and I was just watching a fucking Opie and Anthony tearing him apart. And I was like, I want to see what this guy was like on SNL. And my God, dude, like it wasn't that he was completely terrible. Just the fact that like the material was so bad and they just ran jokes into the fucking ground. And like the jokes would be, I'm dressed as a clown, but I'm at uh, in an office. <laughs> I, I was going to make, make I, 10 minutes. Of <laughs> well, I was going to tell you that it's almost like SNL has done a complete circle because when I was younger, that early SNL to me, I didn't get it. And I was like, you know what it is? It's got to be the atmosphere of the world. Like it's got to be because hippies were running the deal, right? These fucking hippie people. And they just thought this stupid shit was funny. And it wasn't for like 10 years until SNL got this like funniness. Like I would say like it wasn't until like the, the late eighties, all of the 90s and the early 2000s, SNL, was, I think, was really good. But, you know, after 2004, probably, and before 1985, 
or whatever it was. Like, just, I don't know. Yeah, I, I didn't, I don't get, I watch SNL now and I'm like, I don't get it. Why is this supposed to be funny? I don't get it. And like you just said, I would turn into a really old SNL sometimes and Dan Aykroyd would be like, hey, ha <laughs> ha. I did the, I mowed the lawn today. Yep, he mowed it. Hey, I paid my bills today. Yep, he paid him. Some guy like climbing a ladder says everything Dan Aykroyd says, and the crowd just starts laughing. And then his mom calls him and he picks up the phone. And he goes, Yep, mom, talking to my mom on the phone now. Yep, he's talking to his mom. And like, and like people laugh. And he puts the phone down, and then then it just ends. The skit ends, and you go, "What the fuck did I just like? What the fuck is this?" And their attempts at satire back then was so like on the nose and drugs. I think it was the drugs. And uh, Luke lost connection again. Um, hey man, thanks for joining me on Discord, Luke, and everybody else. But yeah, that 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 Discord is just not made for you tonight, Luke. That thing does not like you. But there were some great older jokes. One of my favorite ones that I saw recently that I hadn't seen in a while was the mob boss undercover one. God, did that kill me. I was dying. I think it was Danny DeVito. And he's like he's like going undercover for the cops to like wearing a wire so all the police can hear all his, he's going to throw all his friends and mob friends and under the bus and whatever. And he's wearing a wire. And it, instead, like, all his friends just keep throwing him under the bus. It's fucking hilarious. Um, I, I mean, I've seen a lot of skits from a lot of years, but that was one I didn't remember until I saw it again. And it's like, it's like, it's like oh, yeah, Danny, weren't you? The, did they ever figure out that you're the one that chopped the, the heads off those six kids? He's like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think that was me. I don't think that was me, you know? And he's like, no, no, it was you, man. It was you because you buried him uh, underneath the, oh, oh, I burned my hand on some coffee. Jesus, you all right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Like, it's fucking, like, I don't know, it's something like that, and it's hilarious. It's fucking crushing me, bro. Um, <laughs> it's really funny. And they just keep fucking burying him, like, oh, yeah, remember that guy we fucking buried underneath the Trade Center after we fucking gutted him? And then, remember you, remember you stuffed your fucking card in his mouth and said, call me if you need a life, and then you shot him in the head? That was crazy. And then you buried his body under the fucking cantina. And the cops, and then they cut to the cops in the van and they're like, like writing stuff down. <laughs> and he's like, no, I don't remember doing that at all. Oh, you did it, man. You did it. Hey, listen, we dig up the body. Your DNA's all over that fucking bastard. You did it. You know, you die, you sick bastard. I remember it was just fucking hilarious. Um, um, that fucking skit, I don't remember exactly how it went, but it was something like that, and it was fucking funny. Phil Hartman was great. Joe, I need your mother's your mother's cowbell. Uh, yeah, Christopher Walken was great. Condolingus, remember? Remember Colonel Lingus? <laughs> Bro, Colonel Lingus is... I don't know why it's so weird and funny. Holy fuck is Colonel Ingus funny. Anyway, um, nobody's on Discord. Discord ain't look, working for Luke. Um, and uh, it is what it is. Tuesday night. I will catch you guys uh, some other time. Thanks for being here. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. Maybe I'll just not do anything tomorrow. Um, I don't. Um, yeah, that's about it. I think I've rattled on uh, about as much as I could. And uh, what can I plug? Well, me and me and Jake probably doing out of nowhere actually Wednesday night. So I forgot about that. So, yeah, we will be on Wednesday night. I forgot. I forgot we had Jake back doing that. How could I forget that? 
So I guess uh, I don't know where it is tomorrow night. I Maybe I shouldn't have done tonight then. What am I doing? Um, fuck me. Anyway, see you later. Keep it hard. Hit the, li- hit the like button, by the way. Um, I think we caught up on everything we did. Super chat oh, party. Super chat coming in. Undertaker rapist. Austin Theory Cell. Must see now. Guys, do me a favor when this stream ends here. Go over to Botch Club on, on Instagram and TikTok. But especially on Instagram. Go over to Instagram and um, follow Botch Club. It And watch this video of The Undertaker Rapist. You will not be disappointed. Now, uh, Jeff Hardy, take us out. Um, I need to do beat the clock, uh, ghost. <laughs> Get the Discord working. Uh, it's 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 Luke's phone or something. It's not. I don't think it's Discord. It's uh, it's got to do with Luke's phone. But yeah, man. Um, I um, yeah, bro. Maybe we'll do beat the clock again sometime. I don't know. I I I done beat the clock and it like maybe I'll bring back beat the clock. Maybe maybe I will. Maybe I'll do it. I tell you what, I'll try to do beat the clock next Tuesday, Tuesday night rage, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't think it went well last time I tried to bring it back, but uh, we'll try. Try to do beat the clock. Hungry Boner, you are the top donator of the stream. Hungry Boner 69. Thank you for the 1999. The 1999. Hungry Boner. Oh my God, brother. Oh. Oh my God, brother. Thank you. I'll try beat the clock next Tuesday again. That's when I, I think that's when we used to do it. I don't. Am I wrong about that? Maybe I am, but uh, I'll bring back beat off the clock, and we'll see. But um, I don't know. Tuesday nights. Tuesday nights are not really. They're not doing great. Although the numbers are pretty good. We had about two hundred and seventy people. I think at one point. The numbers are all right. Like, that's not bad. It's not so bad. Looking at the numbers here. Some of the numbers. Yeah. Brother Nero. Why was AEW so shitty? (laughs) Oh. God, feed me Omega. Oh, boy. I will see you guys for out of nowhere, I think, tomorrow. With Jake. If you want to support the show, you guys can use uh, super thanks like Allison did yesterday. Allison dropped a $50 super thanks. Thank you, Allison. Tuckwab. Very much. And you can become a patron on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. And you guys can become a producer, a $25 producer. Thank you to the patron producers like Shell, John Wood, the Ghost from the Coast, Brian Jardine, Spectral Citizen, Alan Stover, Snark, Bates, Stevio, James Beggs, Sid Negan, Maz Ross, Meyer, and Alex A. O'Donnell. Without you guys, I can't do these shows and skip doing my third job. Um, luckily, this is my second job. But my third one, I, I will skip it usually and hang with you guys so this is super important thank you to to everybody who's donating and thank you uh to the patron producers who also uh went above and beyond here the list is not as big as it used to be but still a pretty awesome list shout out to these uh big boys we'll catch you guys uh for for out of nowhere tomorrow night monetize this 459 or 449 this week and 450 the week after. Jeff Hardy, brother Nero, obsolete. 
See you tomorrow. of dramatized inflictions that intensifies this tension I've been tortured with denial